Now, I know this may seem like a cut and paste type of thing because we had made this video already a few days ago. We had talked about the trade between the Ottawa Senators and the Minnesota Wild, where they swapped goaltenders and how today these goaltenders are in a much different place than they were back then. But I will say, the reason we're revisiting this topic is because we hadn't really given the conclusions yet as to how everything has gone down, and because I wanted to go out there and just kind of bring to light what has happened the past few days too. So, today we're talking about the Ottawa Senators and the Minnesota Wild once again, and primarily focusing on Ottawa this time. We're going over the goaltending situation because last we had talked about this, we had discussed how Cam Talbot was a guy who went from Minnesota to Ottawa, who was really good back in Minnesota, but who has really fallen off since then. We also talked last time about Philip Gustafson, the goalie who went the other way from Ottawa to Minnesota, who is now one of the best goaltenders in the league, statistically speaking from a pure save percentage and goals against average point of view. Today, we are talking about the updates, because when it comes to both of these guys, they could not be any different in regards to where they are in their careers and the trajectories going forward. This is because, firstly, the Ottawa Senators are not playing right now. Cam Talbot and his team had been eliminated from playoff contention, and they are just kind of going golfing, I guess. Meanwhile, on the other side, you have yourselves Philip Gustafson for the Minnesota Wild, who had squeaked out a double overtime victory the other day against the Dallas Stars in Game 1. Game number two is going to be on later today, so we'll see what happens then. I'll also use this as an opportunity to say that, hey, the Minnesota Wild are my team for the playoffs this year, and it's been like that ever since their playoff run started. Sure, I had them losing in the first round of my bracket to the Dallas Stars, but that was before I saw the Wild's playoff hype video. Because, I don't know if any of y'all noticed, but in their hype video at around the 45 second mark, they actually used an audio clip of one of my videos in there. And the link is going to be in the description if you want to go ahead and watch it yourself. It's there. It's front and center. They use the audio hit of me talking about the Ryan Reeves trade in their postseason hype video. And I was super surprised to see that the Minnesota Wild gave a spotlight to somebody like me and a few other content creators in their playoff videos. So big shout out to the Minnesota Wild for doing that. They're my team now, baby. Let's go wild. I'm cheering for Minnesota this playoff run because I feel more than indebted to them to return the favor with my love and support. But either way, that goaltender that we had talked about, Philip Gustafson, had himself a game for the ages in that double overtime win against the Wild. And if you take a look at the numbers that he was able to put up, he had 54 shots against, he only let in two, so he had 52 saves for a 9.63 save percentage and a 1.3 goals against average. The guy went out there and had some crazy good saves. He was kind of flopping on his stomach to make some of these, and overall, just the goaltending performance from Gustafsson was pretty noteworthy. In fact, here are some stats that make things a little bit more interesting. Most saves in a playoff game by a Swedish goaltender. His performance in Game 1 was best for third on this list, behind Tommy Salo, who had a 53-save game in 1999, and Henrik Lundqvist, who had 54 saves in Game 2 of the 2017 first-round series against the Montreal Canadiens. He also had the franchise record for most saves in a game, too. He made that with his 45th save, so he added a few more on top of that to just really solidify himself in Minnesota Wild goaltending history. Now, this isn't all that we have to talk about. Of course, the Wild are a good story, the Wild are doing their thing, but when it comes to the other guy, and this is kind of why I wanted to make this video in the first place, too, Cam Talbot in Ottawa. Sure, he had himself a down year, 898 save percentage, 36 games played, 293 goals against, so definitely not the 910 plus goaltender that he had been the past few seasons with the Flames in the Wild, but it was already announced earlier this week that Cam Talbot will not be re-signed by the Ottawa Senators. Dorian already confirmed that they're not going to be bringing him back. Here's the quote, Cam Talbot will not be back next year. We had a good discussion, we offered him a one-year deal and they wanted a two-year deal. Our fans have the right to know how the process goes, and we were far apart on AAV. He's a tremendous human being, though. 
And it is really interesting how it's noted the AAV difference. Like, of course, Cam Talbot is an older guy, as we noted, 35 years old, right? So he probably is looking for as much money as he's going to be able to get. But the fact is, the season he had just had with the Ottawa Senators was not really all too great, especially in comparison to his body of work in the past. So if you take the amount of money he has made before, 4.1 AAV, 2.75 million AAV, 3.6 million AAV, this is sort of the territory he's used to, financially speaking. So for the Ottawa Senators to go out there and say that the AAV was the difference, methinks it's more than likely that Cam Talbot probably wanted something in the similar range, if not maybe just a tad lower, and the Sens, based off of the 898 save percentage, probably were like, okay, well, we're not going to pay you that much. We can't pay you a significantly high dollar amount for a guy that only had an 898 save percentage. He wasn't amazing this past season. He looked shaky at times, and of course, because he is getting older, there's a lot of insecurity there as to whether or not Talbot has the potential and the longevity to continue being that guy. In fact, I'd seen some people talking about a $5 million AAV deal potentially being the ask because if Cam Talbot is going to be the starter, then he wants starter money. I don't know what the nitty-gritty details are about that, but... When it comes to how everything has proceeded, it's kind of disheartening to see, honestly, how Cam Talbot and Philip Gustafson was seen as a big win for the Senators a year ago, and now Philip Gustafson has broken records for Minnesota and Swedish-born goaltenders, and you have Cam Talbot who was on his way out, and that's all the Senators are getting from this trade with the Wild, because there wasn't any other assets swapped around. It was Talbot for Gustafson straight up one for one. And back then, Gustafson wasn't really seen as a player who would pop off in the way that he had. As we had said in the last video, the guy was one of the top goalies in the NHL this season for save percentage. So, yeah, that's wild, isn't it? Pun intended. But we're going to see what happens in game two today. I'm going to go out there and search this up. Gustafson. Is that the starter for today against the Dallas Stars in game two? Most likely, right? It's kind of funny how Marc-Andre Fleury finds himself on the back end of a situation like this twice in a row. Actually, no, three times. This is the third time for Fleury, isn't it? Oh my goodness, yeah. In the 2016 run, there was Matt Murray. In the later Vegas runs, it was Robin Lehner who took over, and now it's Philip Gustafson stealing the spotlight. Man, Flower can't catch a break, can't he? But I guess it's okay, because Flower is a good dude, and we all kind of know that personality of his is very positive and upbeat, so he's probably not taking it to heart, unless his agent goes out there and tweets out a picture of a stabbing in the back sword with the Wilds coach on it. But either way, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about Philip Gustafson and the way that he's performed this season. What are your thoughts about Cam Talbot not returning to the Ottawa Senators and... If anybody wants to talk about it, I'm more than willing to have a conversation about the Minnesota Wild, including an audio clip of me in their playoff video. Like, that's crazy. This has never been done before by any team or anything. Sure, I've had my fair share of interactions with people that work with these teams, and I follow some of them on Twitter, and we've discussed on DMs and whatnot things about working in the hockey world, but I've never actually been like front and center, you know, included in the presentation of what it is they're showing off. My video, my voice, it's there. If the Minnesota Wild win the Stanley Cup this year, then I'm going to go out there and say it's because they put my clip in there. Yeah, 100%. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye.